Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss understanding internal control. A prerequisite of this session is knowing what is internal control and its five components. In this session, what we need to understand is auditors are required to understand controls that are relevant to the financial statement audit. Why? Well, by understanding these controls, auditors, once they know how the controls work, and how effective or not effective they are, the auditor can better assess the likelihood of a misstatement and that could go undetected. Simply put, once we understand internal control, we can predict. We can predict the likelihood. We could assess the likelihood, the probability that a misstatement will occur in the financial system. Now, also, why do we need to understand internal control very well? Because of the audit risk model. If you remember, we discussed the audit risk model in depth, which is audit risk equal inherent risk times control risk times detection risk. And if we solve for detection risk, it's going to give us audit risk divided by control risk times inherent risk, which the risk of material misstatement. And remember, when we discuss the audit risk model, we said that RMM, RMM, risk of material misstatement, and detection risk, and detection risk. When one goes up, the other one goes down. So control risk is part of RMM, risk of material misstatement. So if the control risk, simply put, if we put them on a seesaw here, and we have control risk on one, on one end and detection risk on the other end. If control risk is high, what does that mean? It means you, we cannot rely on the controls. The controls are risky. Then detection risk is low. Detection risk is low. It means we have to do more work, more work. The opposite is true. If control risk is, after we learn about the control risk, control risk is low. If we bring down control risk, if we bring down control risk, then detection risk is high. It means we, we can do less work. Why can we do less work? Because we can rely on good control. Control risk is low means lower, lower risk from the internal control perspective. It means we can rely on the internal control system of the company. So in this session, we need to understand, or in the next few sessions, how do we understand in order to assess whether control risk is low, medium, or high? Why? Because that's going to affect our detection risk. Let's go ahead and start our journey. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. There are four steps in understanding internal control. Obtain and document understanding of the internal control system. In the prior session, we looked at internal control. We understand what it is, but how do we, how, what are the steps that we undertake? And this is what we've learned in this session. We need to take a look at assessing the risk associated with these control. Assess the control, design, execute, and test of the control. Then we're gonna test the control. Then we are going to decide on planned substantive risk and substantive testing on the control. In order to accomplish step one, which is that's all we're going to be focusing on in this session, we're going to undertake three steps. Now, 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 the, the good news is this. If it's a publicly traded company, the company itself, if it's a publicly traded, they are required to have their internal control documented and assessed themselves. So they will have everything ready for us. For a publicly traded company, it's easy. They'll give us the information. Now, what type of information they could have? They could have many types of information. They can have the internal control in a narrative form. We need to know what narrative is. In a flowchart form or in a form of internal control questionnaires. Not quest questionnaires, many questions. We're going to look at each of these sessions as a method to learn about internal control. Narrative is basically a story. A narrative refer to a comprehensive written account, like basically a story, detailing a client internal control mechanism. And usually they have four characteristics about the internal control, about those transactions. First, the initiation. 
A detailed description should clarify the source of each document and record. So where does the transaction start from? The initiation, explaining where customer orders originate and the process through which sales invoices are generated. It could be online, it could be through a phone, a fax, a walk-in into the store, so on and so forth. This is the initiation. After the initiation, we process the transaction. We're talking about sales. If sales amount are computed by a software, that multiplies the quantity by the standard price, this procedure should be thoroughly des described. So here we're, we are going through the process and describing how do we come up with our sales amount. Now again, we are using sales as an example. So that's the second characteristic. The start of the transaction, the initiation, then the process. The third step is documents and record. The narrative should explain how documents and records are managed whether they are filed electronically, archived, sent to customer, discarded, what do we do with the record? What record do we use? Sales invoices, ship and document, what happened to those? Where can we find them? The fourth mechanism is control relevant to the process. And this typically involves explaining controls within the process, like what? Segregation of duties, you know, differentiating between recording cash and handling cash, authorization, approval, such as credit approval if we're talking about sales, Internal control verification procedures like comparing unit selling price to sales contract. So those are the four steps. And the narrative would look something like this. You don't have to read this. The point is I'm showing you a sample narrative. So they will have they will have the details for each step. Now the narrative could be pages and pages. This is simple narrative for a sales for a sales process. But in the real world, narrative could take pages to explain. The second source to learn about the internal control is a flowchart. The company could have a flowchart. It looks like a map. It's a graphical representation of the client's documents and their order progression through the organization. And they should also involve the four element as the narrative, which is initiation, process, documents and record, and showing the control keys. The benefit of the flowchart, it offer a concise summary of the client's system. So if you know how to read charts all it's all on one page or maybe two pages but not narratives including the definition of responsibilities adding auditors and pinpointing controls and flaws within the client's operation so we could look at one chart as long as we know how to read the chart we can understand those four characteristics they are generally more accessible to read easier to read and simpler to revise for the company and it's rare for companies to use both narrative and flow chart it could but they convey they should they should convey the same information. Now this is a sample of flowchart. I'm not going to explain it because you need to you know what each document is, which will be a separate recording if we're going to do that. A third method is internal control questionnaire. That's the third source that the auditor can learn about the internal control. And we're going to be focusing more on internal control questionnaires because we're going to be using them as we assess the next step. After we learn the internal control, we need to assess the internal control. Internal control questionnaires, as the as the term suggests, they're questions, questionnaires, where you have to answer as yes or no, yes or no answers. Ask a series of questions about control in each audit area. You will talk to the salespeople, payroll, purchasing as a means of identifying internal control deficiencies. Now, you have to be careful. There's a lot of pitfall when it comes to internal control questionnaires. And I have a first-hand experience with this because when I was an auditor, I did this. I asked questions when we audit a company. You would ask them a series of questions. I did not really understand what I was asking myself, which is one of, that's one of the pitfalls when you are a staff. I mean, you kind of, but you really don't. The point is the person asking or responding don't understand the question or the person responding is lying to you. So they may answer yes, and the answer is really no. But that's okay. You're not going to go with this. That's the starting point. But the point I'm trying to make, you need to know how to ask the questions. Are the questions proper? Are they relevant to this company? Or are they cookie cutter? Like, you know, the same questions we use for every company. Well, if we're, if we're auditing a real estate company, it will be different than auditing a software, different than auditing a construction or manufacturing, so on and so forth. So you have to kind of, basically, sometimes you have to change the question slightly to go with that company. Most questionnaires require yes or no, and sometimes you have not applicable. Like, you know, the question is not applicable. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Yes or no response, it's a quick way to learn about the system. The main disadvantage, it doesn't show you the full picture. You see one cycle at a time. 
Let's take a look at this internal control questionnaires for the sales department. Here we are looking at Olive Enterprises. Auditor is M. Farhat, reviewed by Denise Tamina, the supervisor. Date completed by Farhat, date completed by the supervisor. And this is for the sales, for the sales transaction. The first objective, sales are recorded, correspond to actual shipments sent to existing customers. So we wanna make sure that the sales are taking place and they are shipped to the to existing customers. So the first question is, has a responsible official given approval for the customer's credit? Okay, so did someone approve the customer credit and is the access to the master file of the charge credit limit, con limit controlled? And do we have control to that credit limit or, or anyone can can give that limit and the answer is yes yes means yes someone is giving the the, appro the approved credit and the credit is limited not, not everyone can give that approval and who does it the president of the company are the sales record corroborated by authorized shipping document and approved customer order so when we have a sales record do we have also shipping document and approved customer order the answer is yes maggie performed this step is there sufficient division of responsibility Responsibilities among billing, recording sales, and managing cash receipt. Yes. Are sales invoices pre-numbered and properly accounted for? Uh, they would answer, not accounted for, but they are pre-numbered. Well, we have a no, because they are not accounted for. Notice, but the documents are pre-numbered. Existing sales are recorded. So we would have to answer this question. Yes, yes, yes. Is there an independent verification of the quantity of specified on the shipping document against the sales invoice? Yes, yes. Let's take a look at section D. Is there an independent verification between the dates listed on the shipping document and the recorded dates? And the answer is going to be no. So notice here, after we looked at all these questions, we found two no's. We're going to call these deficiencies. Okay. Otherwise, for everything else, what they're telling us is if, if that is true, and if they're re really following these internal control procedures, then their internal control is designed properly. Now, this is th just the design. We're learning about their internal control, and this is what we're doing. Now, after we learn about the internal control, we're going to evaluate. Beside comprehending the design, the auditor also is obligated to see, to assess if these design controls have been effectively implemented. Yes, I mean, I learned about their design. That's fine. But are they implemented? Are they working with them? Well, what am I going to do to find out? Well, there are few methods that I can do. There are four methods. Well, the first thing I do is I'm going to update and evaluate the auditor pri prior experience with the entity. So if this is a second year audit or, you know, multiple year audit, I look at their internal control from the prior year and see if there's any no's, okay, and see what they did to them. That's the first thing. Are they fixing what they're supposed to fix? Well, that's the first thing in terms of impl implementation. Make inquiries of a client personnel. Now, ask employees. Ask employees if they understand the role and the context of the internal control. If they're doing, if they're performing these steps, do they understand why they are doing so? Because if they understand, that's a good thing. It means they really understand internal control. And the purpose of these procedures, policies and procedures, is to help internal control. What else I can do? I can look at documentation and record. Now, bear in mind, you remember when we talked about internal control, there are five elements that's going to generate a lot of documents and record. What should I do? Go through the documents and record and see if the data represented in the flowcharts, narrative, and the questionnaires have been effectively being used as they are as they are claiming. So yes, they answer the questions, but the document, the evidence can show me whether they are doing it or not. Also, I can observe. I can simply observe. For example, if they told me, for example, I used to work in a company where we received checks every day in the morning and two individuals would open the mail and immediately endorse the checks. The company was called City Financial. Okay, it's a, a discount a discount uh, lending company. So what they would do, the customer will send the check to us to the office, we will open the, we will open the mail and we restrictively endo endorse the checks. So if I, used, I used to be one of those individuals every once in a while because the manager used to mix us up. That's part of the internal control. But let's assume we were being audited and they ask me, do you do, do, do two individuals open the mail and immediately endorse the checks as, you know, for deposit only? I would say yes. So the auditor would say, okay, based on your answer, the system is working. Now, what would the auditor do? The auditor will observe one day, they would walk in and they just wait there. They don't tell us what they're doing and they would observe if we are really, two individuals are opening the mail and indeed endorsing the check. Now, 
This is observed. Now, be careful what observation is when you are doing it as an auditor. If the person, if the employee knows you are doing it, obviously they are going to follow the rules. So you have to be careful with observation. It's better to do it when the, the person is not aware in their natural state, right? So they, they're not really acting. Also, you can perform what's, what's called a walkthrough of the accounting system. What's a walkthrough? This is just to learn about the system. You pick a few transaction documents, trace them through the entire accounting system at each step, make inquiries, observes, and examine record. That's another thing. You just walk through. Go through the transaction yourself, ask questions, make sure it's working properly. And this walkthrough approach efficiently ensures that the implementation of the management design control, if they have control, you're going to see them as you are going through this transaction. All of these are evidence collection techniques, So, but we're not collecting evidence yet. All what we are doing in this step is learning, learning. All these steps are to learn about the system. That's all. The next step, what are we going to do after learning? After we obtain understanding, learn about the system, we're going to assess, evaluate the risk associated with these controls. Here we are going to assess. We're going to learn a little bit more. How by assessing, by kind of finding, is it really working as as they are claiming because we learned we understand how it works let's assess to learn or to test our knowledge for which of the following reasons does an auditor need to understand internal control that are relevant to financial statement audit why why do we need to learn about financial statement audit about the control relevant to the financial statement audit understand the control is it to detect fraud is this the purpose of it not really it's not to detect fraud that's that that's a huge that's a huge task to detect fraud definitely we're not learning about the control to detect fraud if we are asked to detect fraud that will be a separate engagement therefore that's not the purpose assessing the inherent risk well inherent risk is totally different than the control risk if you don't know what inherent risk is then you know inherent risk is where the the account itself by its existence, it's inherently risky. For example, it's complex, it requires judgment, so on and so forth. So that's not why we learn about control. Assessing inherent risk, it has its own process. So we're down to C and D. Determine the operating effectiveness of the internal control. That sounds kind of, I don't know, sounds like, sounds good. Identify and assess the risk of material misstatement. So why do we learn about controls that are relevant to the financial statement? Well. Is it to determine the operating effectiveness of the internal control? Are we learning this to make a judgment about the effectiveness of the internal control? No, that's not why. I mean, we might be engaged. We might be engaged to solely do this. That's fine. But it's not, that's not the purpose. The purpose we learn about the control that are relevant to financial statements is to identify and assess the risk of, the risk of material misstatement. We're going to be auditing the company. We want to predict. We want to kind of predict means uh, no ahead of time where can we find issues in the financial statement and that's why and that's why we assess we look at controls that are relevant to the financial statement internal control they are relevant to the financial statement audit what should you do now go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs like this one i have thousands of them that's going to help you with your cpa exam with your accounting auditing courses as well whether you are a cpa exam candidate or an accounting student invest in yourself study hard good luck and stay safe